<laughs> What's happening tonight, guys? It is episode 101, and you're probably saying, Den, what the heck's going on? You're live on Twitter. There's a new intro. Uh, well, hey, as you can see, we've been doing some renovations here at the Keep Pound Den podcast. Welcome to our new way of doing things. We put out 100, or over 100, actually, um, <laughs> exciting, memorable, fun, and eh, not so memorable episodes of the Keep Pound Den podcast over the last few years, where we talked to you about what Panthers topics were on our minds. And well, you listened, so thanks for that. But hey, with podcasts constantly dropping with the same trending topics throughout the week, we decided to switch it up, and we want to hear more of what you want to say. So we'd be foolish not to do so with such a unique and passionate community of Panthers fans and also Roaring Riot members. Over the past few weeks, we've asked you guys to submit us some questions on Instagram and Twitter, and we were kind of blown away with the uh, freshness and fun that your responses gave to us. So we decided to bring that into the live show feel. Now, we're still going to drop the audio uh, that we usually do on the podcasts, which will air on the, the Riot Network, powered by Ortho Carolina. You can find those every Friday. But this format will also touch all platforms as well. So I couldn't do this without my dudes, though. Bobby, Bobby's at Tacos and Slurpees. Chris is at Peppa Jack and BB. Uh, I've been up to my ears a little bit with some personal stuff, which is all good. But I'm excited to kick this off with week run, week one rather, what, right around the corner. Bobby, what is up, dude? We'll start with you. And uh, we finally have you on camera, man. What's going on, man? <laughs> I'm doing good, man. I mean, shout out to you guys. Appreciate you for having me, Den. As always, it's a pleasure. We celebrated a milestone for the episodes recently. But most importantly, we are super duper ooper live. And thanks for having me, man. Yeah. Chris, what's up, man? Living the dream. Just, uh... Having a nice Carolina evening tonight and uh, excited to be on and ready to talk some football. But hey, again, we, we, we want to bring you guys onto this. Um, we, we basically want to do this each week. Go live. See what we get for some comments. Again, we're going to bring in the Instagram comments that we have each week. Let me show you a, a little example here. Bobby, actually, I'm going to use your awesome uh, comment that you gave me to the Instagram. I can throw it right up onto the screen there. Um, you guys might not Sweet. be able to see it, Bobby and Chris. But there you can see, Bobby, you wanted to know why the starters are playing into the third tomorrow. So we're going to do that. We're going to bring in not only Instagram comments, Twitter comments, whatever you want. Again, we're going to let you dictate this show because for over two years, we've, uh, <laughs> we've done it for you. So uh, what's happening, Panthers community? And, uh, and welcome back, Chris and Bobby. It's been, uh, I feel like it's been a while. Has it only been a week? Uh, has it even been a full week did we do <laughs> when did we do thursday last week i can't I even remember i think we did do thursday last week yeah it was kind well, of what's weird today uh, i don't even know what today know. is uh, today is thursday. Yeah, today's thursday yeah. august 23rd but anyway um let's kick it off here we'll get to some of the comments we'll get let some people join in here um it's been a while since the dolphins game we already have a game tomorrow against the patriots uh, big one for me, and of course I have a wedding rehearsal to go to, so that's always fun in the preseason. But uh, I'll be keeping Ouch. up with uh, with with the mobile device here. Um, you know, I don't want to get too much into the re reviewing the Dolphins game. I feel like that's kind of been beaten beaten to the ground. But obviously, a few a few of the big things, you know, Christian McCaffrey, of course, becoming kind of that second year guy we want him to be. I think we're finally going to see that this year. Uh, fantasy value, according to the experts. Just flying up the charts. I'm, I'm pretty cool with that. Um, but now they have a bigger test here in the, in the Patriots, in, in my hometown, if you will. Uh, too bad they're not up here. But, you know, it is one of the biggest tests for the Panthers every year that they don't play them in the regular season. We'll talk to Dave Archibald again from inside the pylon a little later. He's going to give us a little insight as to kind of what's going on on their side of the ball and what I'll call, you know, another chance for Bill Belichick and Tom Brady to try to beat Cam Newton. Um they, they, they haven't succeeded yet, so that's pretty fun. But, Chris, I, you know, one of the first things I have on my, my list here is your boy Elijah Hood, man. Talk Loved what Elijah. I saw. Loved what I saw there. Uh, calling, uh, actually bringing in some Marshawn Lynch quotes. And uh, you, you did say Tar Heel Legends, so I'm going to put you on the spot here, Chris. I know one thing that you love to do is rank things. I know one of your favorite podcasts does the Mount Rushmore. We'll come up with a cooler term. I don't think we've ever asked you for your uh, your top five, or even top three Tar Heel legends of all time. Hit us with it. Ooh man! All right, this is a fun one for me. Uh, you got to go, Julius Peppers, number one, obviously. Are we just counting football, or are we counting basketball just, uh, too? In period. Oh man! All right. Well, Ouch. you know, 
Michael Jordan, number one, then. That's an, <laughs> that's an easy one. Um, then probably Julius. Then probably Lawrence Taylor. <clears throat> okay. Then uh, how about um, how about Natron Means? Love oh that guy, God. and he was like a battering ram. I haven't the heard na- the, the name Natron Means in years. Yeah, right. the, fir- the first Carolina football game I ever went to, you know, it was a game that he ran for like 150 yards on somebody. Um, and then uh, to round it out, uh, I feel like I got to go football again. Um, man, it was hard not to like uh, Ronald Curry when he was there with Julius Peppers. Those teams were a lot of fun to watch. So those would be on the off the cuff my top five Tar Heels. Or my favorite part, Tar Heels. I, I didn't realize our, our buddy salesman coming here. Uh, I'll throw it up on the broadcast there. Throwing in Jeff Saturday. Oh, yeah, he was uh, nice. he was at Carolina. I think I think he was just after uh, or just before the Ronald Curry class because there was a couple of linemen there. Jason Brown was there. Um, geez, who else was there? They had a Carolina was pumping guys out for a, a while. Mm-hmm. People forget that Mac Brown was there for a decade before he went to Texas. Oh, Dre Bly, man! How did I forget Dre Bly? That's why I love Dre Bly. This is where we look to you for the uh, for the Carolina stuff. So, good stuff there, and uh, I'll put it up on the screen as well. Um, David Tepper hanging out with you guys. Here you are, Chris, front and center with the Riot Report or or Roaring Riot, however you want to call the photo. Um, You know, that's kind of one of the things I want to talk about with the Dolphins game. Uh, We all saw what happened in the game. We've all reviewed it. We've all heard the experts rip it apart. Um, Chris, firsthand, closest guy to David Tepper in this photo. Um, tell us about that. Tell us about Tepper coming down. Um, did you talk to him specifically? About well, if you, if you zoom in on the picture, he's actually got his hand on my shoulder. He does. So <laughs> it's totally, totally cool for me to call him uncle Dave. I was going to do it regardless, but you know, uh, he is officially uncle Dave to me. Uh, yeah, I did talk to him for just a minute. As you can also see in the picture, I'm carrying uh, Luke around. And if you look at uh, the video that the, the riot posted, you can actually see him talking to Luke and you can hear him. You know, he asked him, what's your name? He says, I'm Luke. And he was kind of, you know, timid. He was wearing his Black Panther mask to hide from people. But um, and, and, and Uncle Dave's like, I know a Luke. And, <laughs> and my Luke was totally, you know, what? There's ones other than Luke Keekley and Luke Skywalker. Not putting it together that that was who he was talking about. So right. uh, super, he was super personable. He was super nice. He uh, he took every selfie. He signed a bunch of footballs. The guys there from, uh, you know, shout out sponsor Pro Image. He was selling every white paneled football he had because people were trying to get Uncle Dave to sign them. But uh, yeah, he couldn't have been nicer. Had a beer with us, showed that he is, uh, you know, genuinely a human and genuinely happy to be here. So I thought it was awesome. That's awesome. I, I did not expect that to uh, to see Dave Tepper down there. I, I saw, you know, I saw it from Zach very early. Uh, him kind of walking the the famous train tracks of the Roaring Riot tailgate. Um, I don't know why. I just, you know, when you think NFL owners, you don't think they're just going to grab a beer and hang out with the, you know, with the fans. And and there he is in a picture yeah. with you guys. I know it was a little early. And as Zach mentioned, I, I guess Jerry did used to do that when he was in better health. Yeah, he would ride his golf cart around Uptown. And uh, what you got to realize, you know, five, six, you know, even as far back as 10 years ago, Uptown wasn't anything like it is now. And there were, you know, a lot more lots. And it was just easier for him to get around. There was more critical mass of cars and whatnot. But not only did he used to just ride around the golf cart, he'd ride around and give people Bojangles. And, you know, I'm never mad at that. So, so. that was that was my <laughs> shot. That would, that would have been a good time for me to, you know, have it for the first time from the owner. Maybe maybe David Tepper can be the first person to serve me Bojangles. I'll, I'll ask him. Yeah, now, technical, you, so. you, you got, you're on a first-name basis with... Uh, yeah. I'll text him. <laughs> uh, hey, Bobby, let's go over to your neck of the woods uh, today. Uh, you might have a uh, you might have a future job modeling for the uh, the Roaring Riot over there. That was pretty cool to see you uh, yeah. getting some props from Zach and the in the crew. So <laughs> make sure you all uh, prep or wear those uh, change the culture shirts proudly. Yeah. I don't even have one of those, Zach. I mean, Dan, come on, come you on, know? man. You got to get on it. Maybe oh, oh by the way, my, my my son. Yeah, my son wanted everybody to know um, uh, he took the picture. He asked me about 17 times, uh, did they know I took the picture? Did they know <laughs> I could take pictures like you, Dad? So um, shout out to my son, KJ. He wanted to make sure that everybody in, in the, in the uh, planet knew he took the picture. So there you go, KJ. You happy? 
You got to give that photo cred on the on the Instagrams, man. Come on. Yeah, man. <laughs> I got to hook them up. Um, hey, so like I said, we're, we're doing a new format here. We're letting you guys come in and uh, kind of dictate the show. We love the questions that we get on Instagram and Twitter each week. Um, so I'm going to pull a few of them up. This is kind of... Um, it's kind of fun. It's almost like a radio where you're not necessarily calling in, but we have um, immediate contact with our friends on Instagram and Twitter. Um, let's just pull one up here. I think actually I put one in for our friend um, Panthers fan in Africa. Awesome, awesome follow, by the way, if you're not following her. Um, I'm assuming it's a woman because it's, it's a female picture. But yeah, it is uh, an awesome, um, awesome follow, awesome stats and kind of a a uh, cool outlook from someone um, that apparently lives in Africa. So she gave us a, a, a question that came in that I actually entered for her because uh, the time had already been up. But uh, she wanted to hear our thoughts on five. Well, well, maybe we'll get to five, but we'll call it between three and five guys that are fighting for spots tomorrow. You know, the NFL calling this the dress rehearsal, probably seeing the starters play the most. Um, what guys are we kind of looking, you know, most forward to? as far as fighting for a spot kind of on the bubble and, um, you know, kind of need to have a good game here to either make a team or make the Panthers. Um, Chris, let's send it over to you. What do you got for, uh, for five guys over there? I got to go back to my guy, uh, Elijah hood right off the bat panic room. Um, still not sure how many running backs we're going to carry at this point. You know, I think it really just depends on how many linemen we have to carry, depending on who's injured and who's not. But, uh, you know, realistically, I think we can safely assume that CJ and CMC are going to make it. So behind that, you know, who else is going to make it? Uh, is Cap a lock? Don't know. Ken John Barner, he's a veteran. He's got special teams. You know, maybe maybe he gets the nod over Elijah. But I still think, uh, I still think Elijah Hood can be a good running back in this league. He just does too many – too many things good to, to not be on a team. Then uh, then beyond that, man, I'm going to stick to my guns on what I said last week about Kevon Seymour. I feel like he just keeps falling down the death chart. And uh, I don't know if he's he's worth saving at this point. And then lastly, uh, the linebackers are stacked again. And um, who who's going to be the odd man out in that one? Is it going to be Jared Norris? He's been a special team stalwart for the last few years. But uh, a, a good linebacker is going to be looking for a job. So. Yeah, no, I think those are those are all three uh, three pretty good ones. I think that um, yeah, you know, Luke Keekley calling Thomas, I mean, calling uh, Jermaine Carter kind of the next Thomas Davis, or he reminds him of Thomas Davis. Um, yeah. I, I we'll get the TD in a little bit, but I think that you, uh, I think that you'll see Carter play a lot of this game. Also, my my man Corn Elder coming out with a top ten play of the week last week. How about that? Mm-hmm. How about that? He'll. Uh, yeah. I think that we can. Uh, I I think Corn has a pretty. I don't know. I, I feel like he has a uh, a good, really good chance of making this team. I don't know if I'd I'd, I'd call him. Oh, he's a bubble at this point. Yeah, yeah, he's he's a lock. So, yeah. um, uh, corn. I guess you know we'll have to put up another one. Um, you know what? One of the ones that I do kind of worry about is uh, Marquise Haynes has, in my mind, kind of underperformed. I don't know if he's how you looked at him kind of going into the season if he would be a lock anyway, but. Um, I want to see him do a little better. I know it's he's not really kind of an, uh, a four-down or three-down rusher. Um, see how they kind of use him. Uh, Elijah Hood was one of mine. Uh, we've talked about it a bunch. I think Elijah Hood actually provides more value to this team than Cameron Artis Payne. Yeah, I so like I. Cap. Um, I just think that it's up. It's kind of like the experiment's up. Uh, you know, um, I think that yeah. Elijah Hood brings a lot more power. Um, mm-hmm. It's funny that him and Marshawn Lynch were talking about the you know the goal line give where. Um, it's funny when you give a power back the ball at the goal line, you know, to try to score, uh, maybe at the end of a Super Bowl or something. But, um, you know, we, we don't have, we haven't seen a lot of that with Elijah Hood. I mean, with the Panthers, period. Uh, Mike Tolbert flashes of it, but he was never really the Mike Just Tolbert. The f- man, like the first and second year, and then he was useless in that role. Exactly. Yeah. So I- I'm cool with, uh, I- I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing some more Elijah Hood, uh, put it in there, but, um, Bobby, what, what what do you got for some players? I think we might have lost you on the video there. I don't know what's going on, but uh, I'm right here. Yeah, I got him. All right, cool. Got well, him. what's up with uh, what's up with uh, some guys fighting for spots tomorrow? Man, honestly, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it to you know, the secondary how I did before, man. And to be completely honest with you, my eyes are on Rashawn Rashawn Golden. The reason why is because he's getting his opportunity. Uh, Chris, I see your face, and I know why you may feel that feel wonder why I feel this way. Wait, are but you, you got to keep him on. 
you think he's on the bubble? I think he's on the bubble. Believe it or not, I think he is. And the reason why I say that is because Ron Rivera is more of a veteran guy. Right. We've seen him go with the vets over the younger guys who can actually play. And Rashawn Golden, I love the kid. But the reason that they're not only starting him tomorrow, but they're letting him play through with the starters as well is because they're waiting to see what he has. Kind of what we saw with Seymour a few weeks back. Remember when he kept getting beat? They left him mm-hmm. in for the entire game because they wanted to see what he has. If a coach already knows what you have and they're already 100 percent sold on what you're doing, they're not going to leave you out there. Right, they're leaving him out there for a reason, just like they did with Kevon Seymour. Um, I'm not saying he's going to be a cut, but I am saying he has an opportunity to be a starter day one. Or on that same token, he has an opportunity to not be a starter and fall on the depth chart. Now, while we're short on safeties, and I understand where you're coming from, Chris, and the question, but you got to understand, Ron Rivera plays things a weird way from different coaches. He leaves yeah. guys out there because he wants to see them make a mistake versus them making a play. Ron will leave you out there to see if you'll make a mistake versus leaving you out there to see if you'll make a sure. play. So we'll see what happens, man. I'm my eyes on Rashawn Golden. Um, Golden, and uh, as Den said earlier, man, I'm a Cameron Artis Payne fan. You know, he said he was on the board before. I am too. But um, I think it's over for him. I don't think he's going to make the team this year. Um, and uh, my eyes are on him and Rashawn Golden. So let's hop into uh, – we did have some questions there about Rashawn Golden. Um, I'm going to put that up on the screen next here. Um, let's see. What, there it is. Our, our friend Panther Dad Dabin 59 comes in, and he, he wants to know how – or is excited to see how Golden and Jackson look against Brady, of course, with Denora Cersei in the concussion protocol. Um, I think this is a good chance for Rashawn Golden, who is also awesome in Madden, by the way. I don't know if you've played with Golden in Madden. <laughs> Um, great Madden player, uh, probably second best Panther defender besides Luke Keekley in Madden. But, um, you know, I think this is the game where you will see, you do get nervous with rookies and Brady. I don't know how much the Patriots will roll out, but I think this is a good time to see, you know, Golden and Jackson not getting fooled by stupid things. Um, yeah. uh, of course, uh, hopefully Denor Cersei is okay. I know he was in the protocol, so we'll see what happens with that. But, uh, again, Panther dad, Dabin sent that in, um, not, not so much a question, but, you know, kind of let us know he's excited for Golden and Jackson. And, and I, I'm, I'm pretty pumped about that as well. Um, definitely the Madden lineup to go with. Shout out to uh, Trip Morgan out there for, for making mm-hmm. me put him in, too. <laughs> sure. um, you know, we actually, before we uh, go to our next question, we did have a comment there in the, in the Twitter. Uh, it's funny, yeah, Cam is the power back of the Panthers. So when we talk about people like, I guess, I don't know. I think you do still need that value in a running back, though, as far as Elijah Hood goes. So, um, I don't know. Well, let, let me ask you this question, Dan. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, sorry about that, Chris. Go ahead, man. Oh, I was going to say, and you, as you know, quarterback touchdowns don't count for the same amount of points as running back <laughs> touchdowns. Oh, never, so never. It's really important to have a running back score those touchdowns instead of the quarterback. Yeah, never. Yeah, that, that only happens when you can. Um, but yeah, uh, so it is my thing, man. Uh, a lot of people are discounting the North Turner's offense. Everybody's asking questions about who's going to be the power back, who are they going to give it to with the two. Jonathan Stewart ain't here anymore. Uh, we definitely know Mike Tobel isn't here anymore. Here's my thing. North Turner is known for for utilizing the fullback. If you all haven't noticed, Alex Armar has been playing far more in the preseason already than he did probably the entire time under Mike Shula. People need to realize and they need to understand Arma is going to be used. Okay, if we're inside the three-yard line, look for a pistol formation, maybe even, even a goal line formation. They're going to hand it off to Alex Arma. Do not be surprised if you see Arma score about two or three touchdowns this year just off of the power running. So keep an eye on him. North Turner's offense is out of this world. Keep trying to tell people. Don't be surprised if you see Armagh with more touchdowns than we expected this season. There you go. Bringing the fullback back to uh, back to Charlotte. I like that. There you go. Uh, hey, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to get Dave Archibald on the line. He's going to talk to us about what's going on in uh, Patriot world and um, kind of what we can expect to see across from the field from the Panthers defense. Hopefully one of those guys isn't Des Bryant. Uh, we'll see how that goes. But I know a lot of Patriots fans are kind of on the fence about that. But uh, stick with us for a minute. We're just going to get Dave on the line. We'll pop right back. And uh, thanks for sticking with us. Talk to you soon, guys. What's going on, guys? Back here on the uh, new live format of the Key Pound End podcast. We uh, are very happy to be joined by someone that's joined us pretty much for the last three years here during this same week. Uh, He writes for Inside the Pylon. You can find him at Dave Archie. Dave Archibald, what's going on, buddy? It's uh, I think it's actually been a year since the last time we talked. 
Uh, what's going on in the world of uh, of Patriots today? Oh, it's just great to have football again and not all the uh, nonsense off-season storylines. And it's always great to be on chatting with you, Dan. <laughs> you mean uh, you mean the, the Brady-Belichick riff, the uh, the Edelman, uh, what's going on with Julian Edelman kind of stuff? Is, is that the stuff you guys are, uh, that you feed into the, this, you know, this time of the year? Oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> the off-season, there's no football going on, so that stuff gets legs. But then once the football comes back, that all kind of just goes quiet. Hey, uh, so I'm going to start it off and just say that I, I don't know how you feel about this, Dave, but if Des Bryant goes to the Patriots, I'm going to be pissed. How do you feel about that? Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, wide receiver is definitely a problem. I and mean, they uh, they just cut Kenny Britt because he was hurt last week, was it? They cut Malcolm Mitchell because he was hurt. And a week or two before that, they cut Jordan Matthews because he was hurt. Edelman suspended. Uh, Eric Decker hasn't caught anything yet. Um, it's not. It's not really looking like that strong a position group. But you know, I'm not. I'm not sure how much Des has left in the tank either. And he's had, um, you know, some off-field questions and also some, you know, playbook route running type questions in the past. So I don't know if they if they sign him. I get it, but I'm also not going to have, you know, I don't think like 2011 Dez is coming back. Yeah, it's it's interesting to see kind of who they're rolling out with. I mean, there's the whole storyline of Belichick sabotaging, at least out of New England. Or actually, I guess it is in New England with like the sports hub and such. Uh, Belichick kind of sabotaging the, the wide receivers with Amendola, Cooks, and all them gone. Um, you know, a lot of talk about the Patriots becoming a running team. Of course, the dress rehearsal every year. Um, the Panthers know what they're kind of going to, kind of going to get from the Patriots. How, how do Patriots fans and, and writers like you view the Panthers? Because, or, or like, what what can you learn from the Panthers? Because, you know, if you look at it, the Patriots' uh, winning percentage against every team in the NFL, the very bottom is the Carolina Panthers. Have struggled, granted, haven't played them a lot, but have struggled with them the most out of all the NFL teams, especially being 0-2 against Cam Newton. Um, what do you gather from that? What, what, what do the Patriots look to, to kind of gain from the Panthers, and, and, and why do they like this matchup so much? Well, I think it's, it's very interesting from that standpoint. You know, they if you look at those last two contests, they've really struggled against Cam. I, I mean, the final scores didn't end up that high scoring, but the, the games didn't have a lot of drives. So both offenses, and especially the Panthers' offense, was extremely efficient. I think, um, you know, the, the Patriots like to uh, try to contain quarterbacks of some mobility. But, you know, Cam's a good pocket passer. And so guys like Cam or Deshaun Watson, who they face week one, who have some mobility but can also, uh, can also carve you up from the pocket, they uh, they struggle to defend those guys because they try to contain them and then they don't pressure them and uh, they just get picked apart. And it's going to be really interesting because I mean, one of the stories of especially the uh, preseason week two game against the Eagles was the young defensive ends. They have three second year defensive ends who've all been playing well. Uh, Derek Rivers, who is their third round pick. Uh, who missed the whole season last year, Dietrich Wise, a fourth-round pick, and an undrafted guy, Keontae Davis. So can they uh, continue to apply the kind of pressure that they did against Philly, and are they going to have contained problems because they're young players? Um, so that's definitely one of the things that I'm interested in watching. And, and of course, one of the biggest storylines of the, the Patriots preseason, uh, well, A, is Sony Michelle not really touching the field too much. Uh, but more importantly, Isaiah Wynn. Um, going out for the season you know I talked about Isaiah Wynn in the draft when we were down there I, I always considered if maybe the Panthers would look at him at that 24, uh, 24th pick so I, I don't know I, I, how does that how does that factor into what the Patriots are going to do this year because when you start talking about the wide receivers you know are the Patriots going to try at least in at least weeks one through four do you expect this team to be more run heavy than they haven't than they have been rather well, it's hard to say because both, as you mentioned, Sonny Michelle's been hurt and also Rex Burkhead has been hurt. So if they want to go that route, it's not like 
the running back group is looking that strong. I, I think, um, you know, wins injury, obviously it's not good, but um, I think that's a position where they could kind of, you don't want to say afford it, but they're basically running out the same unit they had last year. They return four out of five starting offensive linemen. They replaced uh, Nate Solder with uh, Trent Brown, who's looked great, and they even bring back their top uh, backups at both tackle and the interior. So I think Wynn would have been a piece that could have maybe taken that unit to the next level, but I don't think it's going to be a problem. Okay. Well, you know, I mean, th- things do seem a little different in New England, you know, especially with kind of the rifts going into the into the season. I feel like you don't see this much kind of I, I don't know what you'd really call it. I-, I know that the team doesn't the team and Belichick, of course, don't get caught up in it. But there is something going on. You know, is there is there something that you can see this year, whether it's play calling or just really the way they're handling this off this off season and preseason? that sticks out as the most different from any of the other kind of successful, not that they're not going to be successful, but like, you know, years before their Super Bowl runs and such. I mean, they've they've dealt with a lot of off season stuff in previous years. I mean, there was that one year when uh, they had trouble working out an extension with Vince Wilfork, and there was a report that he like ripped the name tag off his locker and they ended up sorting that out. There was the year when Logan Mankins called Bob Kraft a liar to the press <laughs> and they worked and held out for like eight weeks and they worked that out. There was the year when Aaron Hernandez murdered someone and got cut. <laughs> Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know. It hasn't been all uh, sunshine and rainbows and they still managed to, uh, to make it work. So, you know, I don't know the extent. I don't know how much smoke there is. I don't know how much fire there is, but they're pretty good at dealing with distraction. Okay. Well, you know, I think one of the biggest stories I saw also, um, or, or really when you play the Patriots, the biggest story is always going to be Tom Brady, thorn in my side forever. Um, you know, turning 41 this year, a lot of people kind of showed, I think it was one of the e- many ESPN shows, had showed that, you know, Brett Favre fell off when he hit that age. Um, anything worrying you about Brady this year? Any, anything different? I mean, the whole off season, holding out a little bit. I learned today on the sports hub that he doesn't drink water with his meals or drink anything with his meals, which is weird because I do that too. So I can't beat Cam Newton and I don't drink with my meals. So I'm basically on the TV 12 <laughs> diet. Um, you know, is, I, I don't know. Is, is there anything that you, you can kind of buy into that as far as, I mean, obviously Brett Favre's a gunslinger. You're going to have your up and down years. Um, does 41 worry you, worry you about Brady at all going into this year? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think you know, what Brady, where Brady is, is kind of unprecedented, but his whole career is kind of unprecedented. I think, you know, as long as he stays healthy, I don't think we're going to see a lot of a drop off. But the problem is once you hit your, your 40s um, and, you know, those of us who aren't, uh, superhuman are <laughs> once we get into our 30s I'm I'm 38 you know you, you don't bounce back as easily as you used to he had kind of a uh, a lingering I think it was like a knee or an ankle issue last year um, for like four weeks and his numbers dip you know this is kind of the age where you you pull a hamstring and you're not good to go and you know five days later so I think that's kind of the concern is you know, is he going to, if he looks good, is he going to look good for 16 weeks or is he going to kind of look good for six weeks and then get dinged up? And what is the state of his health when the playoffs roll around? Right. It's always nice to have kind of a young, handsome, you know, uh, uh, backup quarterback behind you too. So we'll see what happens uh, with that. They don't get much prettier than Brian Hoyer. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, Dave, a few more questions. Um, again, always looking forward to the, uh, the dress rehearsal, I guess we'll call it and the, uh, for three years, you know, and then having one off when we play in the regular season. Um, you, you know, it's, everyone asks me, you know, how, how long players are going to stay in. And I feel like the, the Patriots have kind of been 
a little weird this year about uh, usually you wouldn't see Tom Brady play in the first two preseason games almost at all. And he's been in there. Um, what do you expect to, ha- to happen on Friday night as far as the Patriots go? What's kind of the main thing that they're looking for? We talked about kind of our battles, but what's one of the biggest battles that is happening in, in, uh, in New England that really needs this game to kind of decide? Like, where are you looking? I'm really interested in cornerback. Stefan Gilmore is, I think the last time you guys saw him, he was getting like lit up in that Panthers game. But after that, really after that game, he settled down and played terrific the rest of the season. Um, so he's solid at that number one spot. And I think beyond that, they have, I'm looking at the roster right now, they have nine guys. And they're all guys who I could see making the roster. And I'm not sure who's going to start, who's going to get cut. I mean, probably the number two job is between Eric Rowe and Jason McCourty. Mm -hmm. And then the slot is like four different guys. There's uh, Keon Crossan started last game, the seventh round pick. Uh, um, Jamal Wiltz who was on the practice squad last year, started the first game. They got second round pick Duke Dawson. They got Cyrus Jones, who was a second round pick a couple of years ago. Jonathan Jones, who played well in the slot role. I have no idea how that group is going to sort itself out beyond Gilmore. It almost wouldn't be surprising to see anyone cut or anyone start, basically. Okay. Well, uh, hey, it is, uh, it is already upon us. Week three's preseason game is tomorrow night at Bank of America Stadium. Uh, hey, Panthers will be wearing a, another brand new uniform, Dave. So the fir- this is the first time that you or any of us here in, uh, I guess we'll call it Panther Nation, I don't have another term for it, are going to see the Panthers apparently wear their black jerseys with blue pants, uh, which is kind of a Madden like abomination. I, I-, I generally wouldn't wear that. But um, <laughs> I'm, I kind of want to see how, how it's going to look in real life. So uh, Dave, we get that treat tomorrow. By the way, uh, be on the lookout for that. So uh, I guess it's preseason for the uniform designers too. Preseason for everything, man. You get the tailgates, you get the refs making terrible calls. Um, you know, it's we're all practicing, I, and I'm even practicing. You know, with my my uh, my cooking at home, nachos and whatever. So we'll uh, mm-hmm. we'll, we'll see. Yeah, I could goes. barely drink six beers at the tailgate last week. It was embarrassing. Oof. Yeah, you can't just go. Yeah, you can't just dive into week one. So. We'll see how yeah, and goes. Dave, and Dave, you could tell Bill, uh, tell Bill, tell Bill Belichick. It doesn't matter what he's trying to do. Um, this this little wide receiver game, we know it doesn't matter who Tom has. Mm-hmm. We're not crazy. It yeah. doesn't matter who he has. He's going to put up three hundred a game. We know that he's just holding out for Brenton Burson. It's fine. Yeah, we know Dave, it's going to what, happen. What's, what's, yeah, what's up with that, Dave? Didn't uh, Brenton come down there for a workout? Was that true? Did he? I don't. I don't remember hearing about that. Oh, he did. Yeah, it was. Uh, well, it um, was. It was reported by some weird. I, I wasn't reported by the top. The top writer. So I don't know if that actually happened, or if that was just a joke. That uh, I think um, actually Barstool Sports said it, and they were saying that basically Bill Belichick tries to collect all the white receivers. It's like Pokemon. Like gotta collect. <laughs> gotta collect them all. I and let's be pretty- real. If if you just hear Randy Moss's voice, what are you gonna say? Exactly. Straight cash, homie. <laughs> anyway, uh, Dave writes again for Inside the Pylon. You can find them at insidethepylon.com. Uh, he's at Dave Archie on Twitter. Uh, Dave, I know you guys did the draft guide um, over there on Inside the Pylon, which was awesome, by the way. Uh, you offered that to us. So that was that was really cool. Uh, what else is going on this year that we can uh, we can look for on the website? Um, I mean, a, a lot of our... Uh our usual great content. We're uh, ramping up the college stuff now and our NFL coverage, uh, you know, now that the season's going. And uh, I think we're going to have an announcement soon about, I think we're going to do a, uh, a Patreon. So we're going to uh, announce that soon with some, uh, some nice goodies there. Um, and uh, our, also our podcasts have, uh, have started back up, the Breaking the Plane podcast. And uh, Pylon U, our college podcast, St. Alexander, made his triumphant return. So uh, it's a lot of exciting stuff going on in ITT land. Nice. Well, I don't know if we're going to call it that. I, I might have 
I might have just made that. <laughs> well, up. that's what we're gonna call it. There you go, ITP land. I'm into it. Uh, so wait, real quick, just for the record, uh, the Britton Burson was reported by a little outlet called Pro Football Talk. Uh, no one's heard of it. And that, that was according to Doug Keat of Nesson. Uh, how far? I see how... The pro Joe confirming that too, Providence Journal. There you go. <laughs> Well, uh, hey, Dave, um, hopefully hopefully this game goes well for both of us and uh, we can kind of kind of move on to week one. I know you guys have the Texans week one. By the way, I do want to say that I hate saying that uh, hate hearing that the Patriots have Cam Newton to to prepare for Deshaun Watson, because based on the obvious fact, I mean, what, do, do, do those quarterbacks have, you know, striking similarities to you? I don't really think that's a good. No, comparison. I, no, I. I don't think it's a good comparison to them as players. I mean, their body types are totally different. But I think in terms of how the Patriots uh, try to defend them and in terms of the problems that they create for the Patriots when they try to defend them, I think it's similar in that respect. Yeah, I I definitely agree, Dave. I think it's more of a uh, what do we do when the play breaks down? Um, We both know Cam Newton is probably arguably one of the best in the game when the play breaks down and make a play with his legs. And it's similar to Deshaun Watson. When the play breaks down, he's going to make a play, scramble out to the side, maybe even complete the pass or get the first down. So it's it's, it's similar in that aspect, but that's probably all I would give it. So I'm right there with you, Dave. I think the play breakdown thing is going to be the best comparison you can give it. And I think both those guys, that's what they really try to stop. And the problem is both those guys, you know, if you contain them in the pocket, well, they can still throw. <laughs> I mean, like, well, you you ask. five <laughs> seconds in the pocket, it's not like he's, he's not going to know what to do with it. So wait, Dave, what you're saying is Cam Newton is a pocket passer? I, I mean, I think he's primarily a pocket passer. <laughs> That's what I heard. I'm just writing it down. Yeah, we, I just want to make sure I, I hear the right thing. 9.47 <laughs> p.m. August 23rd. <laughs> Dave Archibald. Anyway, Dave, uh, we're gonna let you go, but thanks for uh, thanks for hopping on. As always, we talk to Dave every every preseason at right at this time, week three, and or if we are uh, playing in the regular season, which um, kind of went our way last time. But Dave, or, uh, or if the Patriots play in the Super Bowl, which I forget what happened last year. Actually, but that's year true. That's that true. I made the yeah. deal with you that we would have you on every time the Patriots made the Super Bowl, and you've basically like been the host of the show. So. Um, <laughs> but it's always good talking to you, Dave. We'll, uh, we'll check out what's going on inside the pylon again at Dave Archie. Uh, and thanks for, uh, thanks for joining in tonight. We'll talk to you later, man. Huh? Thanks guys. Great, a lot later, of fun. Dave. Great talking to you, Dave. Later, dude. So let's, uh, let's hop into some, uh, some fun stuff. We talked to, we talked to Dave there about, um, I don't know, kind of, kind of the, the fun things that the Panthers are doing, right? With the uniforms, obviously there's the midfield logo, I brought it up to you guys. Uh, I'm going to throw it up on the screen here. Thanks to our, our friend David McClelland over on Twitter. Um, Panthers, Panthers uh, bang, let me start over. Bank of America Stadium now has, in the latest update of Madden, the Panthers logo at midfield for the first time ever. I mean, I think this is just kind of a, a done deal at this point, right? Uh, that we will be seeing this week one. Yeah, yeah, I think so, man. I mean, it's almost like, it's it's like having having a girlfriend, a fiance, a wife, and they're already beautiful. And it's like, then they do that little small thing with their hair, and it's like, ah, it's like <laughs> Me, so perfect. Yeah. Now you're perfect. Yes, man. It's just, that's what's happening, man. Like the stadium is already one of the most beautiful stadiums. I don't care what anybody say. One of the most beautiful stadiums in the league, and then you throw something that we've been waiting for, like for a long, long time. And on top of it, the Tepa era is insane. I mean the 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 jerseys, the pant combination, the I mean the the logo Water the slides, beef there jerky, you go. it's all happening. Wait till there they put go. a lazy river around the stadium and then it's then we're there. <laughs> there Does one of the stadiums have that? Uh so a baseball stadium does. The guy right, who was right, trying right. to so buy the Hurricanes before Tom Dundon did, his name's escaping me, but he owns a couple minor league teams. It's the only reason I know this is the Frisco Rough Riders. Uh it's a Pittsburgh guy. <laughs> He, had, he put a lazy river in the outfield. It's pretty incredible. There you go. <laughs> there you go. I'm into that. Um, hey, let's let's hit up some of these questions again. Um, here, yeah. We get another question here. Um, not really a question, but more of a concern. Let's talk about uh, T Hawks over on Instagram wants to know how bad our secondary will be this year. And hey, back to our original question. 
what are you more concerned about? I know it was technically safeties, but safeties or offensive line, I consider the safeties, obviously, when you talk about secondary, I don't just think about the cornerbacks. Um, I don't think the secondary is going to be that bad. I, I really don't. Um, I mean, with I, I think that I think that what we're seeing right now from Dante Jackson, I know we knew he was fast, but we're kind of used to getting that build up from the draft and then coming back down to earth. I'm not really feeling that with Jackson. I feel like he actually can be kind of an impact from week one. It might take him a little bit to kind of learn the NFL and, and kind of, you know, we'll kind of see his, him getting fooled a little bit. But I, I do think that he's going to be able to, to go in there. Obviously, Galden, I love Corn Elder. Captain Munderland has stepped up a ton. We haven't seen a ton of James Bradbury. Not that I don't think we need to um, at this point. I think we, we kind of know what we got from Bradbury. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I, I, well, well, I'll switch it over to you guys. Chris, um, how do you feel about this comment? Uh, how bad will it be? I don't know. I don't know that it'll be any worse than it was last year. You know, you remember Kurt Coleman was out for most of the season. Um, I don't think that there's a ton of concern around Mike Adams. You know, the same thing we were just talking about, Tom Brady. When's, when's age going to catch up? Uh, Bradbury, you know, I'm super comfortable with. It's just all about who gets on that that other side of the, uh, the other starting corner position. Um, but for me, I, and this is going to sound terrible, but running with the starting lineup with Moten at left and Searles at right, I feel more comfortable with that than I did with Brian or uh, Matt Khalil and um, Moten at right tackle. I mean, I'm totally fine with that. Yeah, I was thinking about that too. It's, it's almost like you know what you got the other way. Sure. What, what you have now. Could I mean, be good. It really, it really can't be worse. No. Right? So, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of... Uh, I, I'm feeling the same way as far as those two guys. Uh, Bobby, secondary. You, you freaking out or what? Nah, I mean, freaking out. I mean, freaking out for what? We've seen it at the worst, right? Um, at this point, we have guys that are speedy. So, even if they get beat, they can at least make up on the play. Uh, my eyes on, on a lot of guys, like you said, Corn Elder. Elder uh, we already know what Bradbury is going to bring. Um, my eyes are also on Dante Jackson. Um, I think one of the most important things I've seen from the secondary this offseason was Captain Munnerland coming out saying that he would not be complaining about uh, playing time and he's going to know his role, he's going to play his role. That's going to be big for the growth of these young cornerbacks and these young safeties because it's very important for them to see a leader on the field, on and off the field as well. Um, I think, you know, we're going to be fine. I don't think we're going to be as bad as we were last season. Um, you know, Josh Norman ain't walking through those doors, so people please stop comparing Dante Jackson to Josh Norman. There are two different people, two different players, two different styles. Just because they run their mouth doesn't make them the same. Um, Dante Jackson is going to fit this defense very well. He's going to have some hard spots now. He's going to play against some quarterbacks that are going to know where to take advantage of him. He's going to be it's going to be a learning phase, but we are going to be okay. I feel great about the moves this team made this offseason. We'll be fine. Yeah, man. Um, you know, a few other things today. I don't know if you guys saw the Charles Johnson uh, retirement ceremony over at Bank of America Stadium. Uh, shared some pretty cool stories about how, especially how he had $18 million on the table uh, to, to join the Tampa Bay Bucks and just couldn't do it. Um, he didn't want to go up against a team that he's been going up against and, and basically friends for all those years. You, you really kind of saw another side of, of Charles Johnson. I know that we kind of came down on him a little hard as he was kind of um, you know, coming towards the end of his career, especially with the back surgery. Um, but, you know, taking that, that hometown deal was, was, I felt it kind of went under the radar. I mean, everyone was like, oh, yeah, he should do that. But when he starts talking about what he had on the table, um, really kind of poured his heart out to the, uh, to the Panthers community today. And uh, there's a cool video for that over on the riotreport.com, uh, by the way. So uh, do you guys get to check that out today? Yep. Uh, until the sound went out. Yeah, I don't know what happened with that. Uh, hoping our sound's still working, so we'll see. Yeah, they need to get you down there, Dan. <laughs> hey, I, yeah, I, I'm, I saw it. I'm here. Uh, let's pull in some more. Uh, let's pull in some more uh, comments here. You know, do you guys think that we'll get a new stadium or just the remodel? Comes in from uh, at Puma uh, 1014 on on uh, Twitter. Um, I I don't know. I think Bank of America Stadium's pretty safe as far as a new stadium. Chris, I, you you're probably the best person to throw this out to being in that area more, more often. Um, what do you think? I, 
I think I've made my my feelings on it pretty clear. Like I think building a new stadium is just a massive waste of money. Our stadium is in excellent condition because it doesn't host a ton of other events. It hosts 10 football games a year, you know, a few uh, soccer matches and every 15 years a concert. So the stadium just doesn't have the wear and tear. Does the stadium need some upgrades? Absolutely. I don't think anybody's going to argue that. There were some really great upgrades done a few years ago when they brought in the escalators. They put in the drink stations that really expedited the uh, the snack bars and whatnot. So I think that people have this in their mind that Charlotte will 100% get a Super Bowl or a Final Four, which I, I think the Final Four is not out of the realm of possibility if they get a, a domed stadium. But no, I just I don't see the need for it. I mean, yes, the stadium is 23 years old, and yes, it, it's not as fancy and shiny as some other stadiums. But the Panthers sold, what did we sell for? $2.75 billion? Over a billion of that was tied up in the land and the stadium itself, you know, in, in terms of value. So uh, Uncle Dave is a fairly smart man to be as rich as he is. I think he's smart enough to know that you don't, just destroy half of what that investment was to spend another, you know, let's be realistic. You're talking another two, $3 billion at this point to build a stadium. Um, now what I do think will happen is they will build a facility somewhere outside of town, probably down there. Uh, shout out to Tika K what's up um, somewhere in that area, maybe around Carowinds. And I think that they turn the practice fields into uh, some sort of, you know, Panther land, if you will, like that becomes, maybe parking, maybe tailgating, uh, something. I think that that's more than likely what you'll see versus seeing a new stadium. Yeah, kind of like Patriot Place over here in uh, in New England. Well, so, Well, I think something like that outside of city limits. I'm saying where the practice okay. fields are now, you yep. still build something, whether that's a parking deck, whether that's a massive tailgate facility, because that's something else the Panthers could capitalize on. Uh, I say this every chance I get. The coolest – well, I shouldn't say the coolest, but I thought the – yeah, I'll say it, the coolest. When we went to the Niners game last year, week one in uh, Santa Clara, the Niners sell tailgate passes for Six Flags right there. So you actually go into Six Flags, all you can eat, all you can drink, and there's a roller coaster. And we're not getting a roller coaster. Maybe a Lazy River. I'm holding out for that. But <laughs> if, if, if you had something like that, a Panther-sponsored tailgate, that's another revenue stream for them. And I think that that's one thing they've been consistent with. You have to create more revenue streams. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm with that. Um, yeah. what else we got here? Uh, we, we can touch upon it real quick, but obviously DJ Moore, uh, got a little trouble over the week. Uh, it's been talked about, but going 113 miles per hour. Uh, the funny thing is, is I texted these guys. Um, I <laughs> I texted these guys, and I meant to say DJ, but I sent I didn't say anything. It just said blank just got pulled over going 113 miles an hour and you guys <laughs> thought i did uh <laughs> kind of like bobby tonight and his his snap oh yeah we won't even get into that <laughs> but you guys thought that i got pulled over going 113 miles an hour which is hilarious and then i had to backtrack and be like no 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 dj dj so yeah, i thought um, we were getting your one text from jail <laughs> <laughs> one call and it's the uh it's, it's the, the podcast for an hour right. that'd be someone who's that. not within 10 hours of driving to get you out of jail smart Hey, I, I'd yeah, call I you think guys. I think people I think people made um, just just from what I saw with the reports. Um, I personally believe people weren't uh, serious enough for the situation. Um, I think it kind of flew under because it's the off season, things of that nature. But that's a very serious situation. Like we're yeah. talking 113 miles per hour. It's not. I mean, we laugh about it because DJ's fast. He was driving fast. Yeah, um, I even it's saw. It's an easy joke. It's an easy joke. Yeah. Yeah, I even saw one of my Falcons uh, buddies uh, say uh, he was he was going that fast because Cam overthrew the ball. And he had to catch it. Like I, I I saw I saw all types of jokes. Did that right? guy rise but, up too. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. I mean, it was it was just it was just to the point where it's like you know he needs to see the story of Bobby Fields. Um, I saw somebody yeah, exactly uh, what I was going to say. That's yeah. what he needs. Somebody needs to sit yeah. his ass down and be like, "Look, I know that you're bulletproof. You know that you're bulletproof, but this shit is real." Yeah. It's real. It's very real. I mean, you can't can't play with your life and other people's lives like that. Um, I like to make jokes, but also want people to know, man. Um, you know, older people know this. Young guys, young girls, if you're listening, that ain't cool. Slow your butts down. Um, and and I hope you know Rob Rivera pulled him to the side. Also, hope he has somebody in his personal life pull him to the side and say, listen, 
don't let this happen again. He needs to, you know, I know it's going to probably be a slap on the wrist for him, but I hope he understands how serious this is. True. I, I agree with that. Hey, hey, Bobby, I just realized you, we had your question uh, that, yeah. you, that you sent us nicely as an example. Uh, as uh, as far as why are the starters playing into the third, but we never got you a uh, <laughs> never let you speak your mind on that. Did, are you you're not you're not into that for this game because doesn't that usually happen kind of week three, especially yeah. Patriots game? You, yeah, you, I mean, you don't need to see any more of this. I don't need to see it. I mean, because I'm with you. Here, here's a, here's the thing that really rubbed me the wrong way. I mean, honestly, I got kind of pissed off with it. Um, you guys haven't heard me talk about Ron Rivera in a bad way in a long time. But I'm going to come back to this. The fact that he says he wants to see how we make halftime adjustments. Like, Ron, <laughs> the halftime adjustment issue ain't with the players. It's with you, my friend. Yeah, let's see. You so, yeah. yeah. So so we, we need to focus on a halftime adjustments with the coaches. It does not matter which players are in the game if the coaches aren't making the right adjustments. Now, if you feel, if you really believe that an eight-year veteran in Cam Newton and these guys that are behind him on this on this offense – need to play into the third quarter of a preseason game. And get broken ribs. Right. I mean, Not like that hadn't happened before. Right, man. And here's the thing that really gets to me, and I say it all the time. You have players on the opposing team who are trying to make the team. They're trying to impress Bill Belichick and, heck, the rest of the NFL in case they get cut. And you want to take an opportunity to leave our starters, our precious starters out there on the field with young players who are going to do whatever it takes to wow that sideline and wow the rest of the NFL – you're crazy. There's no reason. I get maybe playing into the second, but the third, that's that's ridiculous, man. Nobody can sell me on the third quarter. I, I like what Sean McVay's done in L.A., and I don't know if you guys have seen this, but he ran his starters pretty much the whole first half week two of preseason, and he's going to sit every one of them down weeks three and four because he knows what he has. You know, um, that's a pretty established team outside of Jared Goff. And, I mean, he had a great year last year, and I think that a lot of people consider him a future MVP candidate. But there's no, there's nothing to gain by throwing those guys out there. I mean, what, like you said, you got an eight-year veteran at quarterback. He, he should have his, have his timing down by now. After three <laughs> weeks of training camp, a week of practice, you know, yeah. he's got had consistent. I don't think any receivers have missed any time since uh, Curtis Samuel missed it at the beginning of camp. Right. You know, uh, C.J. Anderson, maybe you could make an excuse for that. But as porous as the offensive line has been, I don't see any reason to uh, to put those guys out there and put them in harm's way. I agree. Yeah, I agree. And a lot of people, a lot of people may bring up. Sorry, Dan. Uh, a lot of people may bring up North Turner's offense. But uh, listen, man, if those guys ain't got it by now, a preseason game ain't gonna change yeah. that. Yep. Yeah, and I think that, you know, like you mentioned that, that McVeigh there, I, I think that for every team, you, you do have a different kind of scenario. I mean, so, some players aren't fighting as much on certain teams. So, I don't know. I think the Panthers are kind of, they, they do need to see three quarters from certain players. Um, yeah, but, they don't need but to be Cam Newton, Cam Christian Newton. McCaffrey, right. uh, Devin Funches, Greg Olson, Thomas Davis, yep. Luke Keekley. Mm -hmm. Put Rashawn Golden out there for all four. I'm yeah. all for it. I said this two weeks ago. I thought it was better to start him from the get-go over Tar Heel legend Denora Cersei. Um, <laughs> Who didn't you know, make the, the top five, by the way. Trial, trial by fire. Yeah, it's funny. I don't even remember him being there, to be honest with you. Uh, but, uh, you know, put those guys out there. Put the young guys out there. I want to see Jermaine Carter for four quarters of a game. Yes. I want to yes. see Deshaun Hall, who I should have mentioned in Bubble Watch. Yeah, he was uh, one of them. I, I, know, kind of, I kind of group him with, with Haynes. Kind yeah, of, one of, both of those guys aren't making the roster. Yeah, um, kind of a bummer. You know, I want to see those dudes out there. Uh, what's the other guy? Young, the tall guy? The guy's like 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, the defensive end? Um, yeah. I don't know. They all run together. But, uh, yeah, I mean, put those guys out there. Run, run, run them into the damn ground. And then, you know, week four, you know, if you still need tape on some of these guys, put them out there. But there's about 15 guys I can think of off the top of my head that have no business – putting shoulder pads on tomorrow yeah i definitely agree man um I, I can't for the life of me i cannot wrap my mind around ron rivera's logic um maybe he has his eye on something that we don't know about yet normally i try to you know play play that part and say what well, guys you know it is something out there that we don't know yet we can't see maybe we'll figure it out later but right now man it just doesn't make sense man we're talking preseason we're not talking about you know a lot for the playoffs in week 15 and they're trying to play guys in week 16 they want to see what certain guys can do and they're leaving them out there versus sitting them this just doesn't make sense to me man 
Like yeah. it just doesn't make sense. And I, I am I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I'm terrified of an injury happening tomorrow night to one of our key guys. Um, and I'm terrified for Christian McCaffrey because they're testing him running in between and kept running in between the tackles. And I just hope to God that if they run him in between the tackles, he's just going right. Just don't go left, go right. But um, I know I know Matt Khalil probably isn't playing, but still, just go right, man. Um, I just can't afford for anything crazy to happen. Um, I don't know. I, I don't like this. I don't like it. Yeah, of course. Um, what it's looking like, well, just going through the line, we haven't really talked about that. Uh, we have a few minutes left, but it looks like it will be Moten, Searles uh, at the tackles, Van Roten at, at left guard, Turner at right guard, and Ryan Khalil at center. Um, I, I don't Ride or that. die, man. I don't hate I'm that. good. Yeah. I'm not even stressed about it. So, uh, you, you, with, know, you know something that – go ahead, Dan. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no. I want to hear what you have to say first. I was going to move on, but what's what's up? No, no, I was just going to say, well, something that stood out to me, you guys remember that run Christian McCaffrey had against the Miami Dolphins? Something that really stood out to me was Arma on that block. And I'm just wondering oh, yeah. if we can move Arma to the left and he plays off of, I almost called him Mike Remmers, plays off of Matt Khalil's weak side. That's how bad he is. Plays off of uh, Matt Khalil's weak side and just see, you know, if he can be almost like that double team, in a sense, for Matt Khalil and, you know, just see what he brings because he's a heck of a blocker as well as C.J. Anderson, the acquisition of him. He's a great blocker as well. So I'd be interested to see if we can put C.J. the arm out on Cam's left to help with the uh, whole Khalil situation. Well, dude, speaking about having a good game and being a good blocker, uh, Ian Thomas set a pretty good pretty good edge for uh, for McCaffrey on that run as well. So Yes. Um we are uh, – when you do video, time flies, guys. We are kind of up on the hour here. I did want to address a couple things. Um, Thomas Davis, uh, not allowed to even attend games. I don't know if you guys saw that. Uh, during his suspension, he talked about getting a box, kind of hanging out with the Panthers fans, and um, they won't even let him into the stadium. Isn't that normal, though? Yeah, I think that's pretty normal. It's, it's a bummer, though. Yeah, you know? you're not supposed to be in team facilities, and I know – but As well, I consider myself part of the team. But if you're in the stadium, <laughs> you know you're you're on you're on ground. So I guess so. Yeah. The thing is, you just got to be smart about it. You don't put it out there in the news. You pull the old Bobby Valentine. You get you a fake mustache. Say, you get yeah, some, get some glasses, glasses. Yeah. You yep. put on a hat. <laughs> Nobody's gonna recognize him. Come on, TD. You're better than that. Yeah. Be smart. Yeah, man. Um, finally, I was kind of digging through some articles, and I found a uh, a funny quote here. I'll throw it up on the screen. Um, from our buddy Kean Fahey, who we, who we mentioned last week on the uh, episode 100. Mm. Uh, this from March 9th, 2017. Uh, Kean Fahey says, Matt Khalil was the worst starter on arguably the worst offensive line in the league two years ago. And then he got hurt. <laughs> and here he is kind of uh, back on the Panthers here um, dealing with it with a knee injury and I, I don't know. I, I, if this is so apparent, I mean, you see the Vikings... It's kind of unla. I don't. I don't really. I, I was trying to look at what that cost them. Did that cost them any money? Letting Khalil what? go, Matt Khalil. No, no, he was unrestricted. Completely unrestricted. Okay. Yeah. Because you know we're talking about them. They pick. They pick up George Iloka this week, um, and for free, basically <laughs> veteran minimum. Yeah. And you know it's easy when you unload a fifty-five million dollar Matt Khalil. Granted, they probably weren't paying him that much. But yeah, he was only. I think. I mean, only still, his rookie deal was you know twenty-one I mean. million guaranteed. Yeah, yeah. So, but but as far as um, freeing up that money, you know, it is kind of you know th this league. I, I have kind of complained that the rich get richer, and it is tough to compete sometimes. You know, Des Bryant or someone will take a vet deal with the Patriots, but won't sign for the Browns. You know, X million dollars. So it's kind of tough to get better in that sense. So I, I do kind of, I don't know. I, I get it as far as the player standpoint. I always wondered if the league would get involved with like having to pay, I don't know, more money if you're, if, if you're in it's, that situation, but it's, it's uh, 11 on 11, man. Who knows? It's not yeah. like the NBA where you, you got all these guys that are going to the warriors to play for free just to get a ring, you know? Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, I agree. But, Des Bryant's not the difference between the Patriots winning a Super Bowl and not winning a Super Bowl. No, no. Yeah. But in they, fact, I would argue that he would not help. Um, I, I I can't think of a situation where Des Bryant. I mean, you can say the same thing about like Reggie Wayne, and obviously Kenny Britt just got cut. Corey Holt. But I, but none I those can't guys think, ever made it out of camp. Yeah, but I feel like those guys were later in their career and not the freak that Des Bryant is. I mean, if you get a like, dude, I would I would take Tory Holt at his prime over Des Bryant in his prime. 
I would take Reggie Wayne in his prime over Des Bryant in his prime. True. Well, see, here's here's but the thing very about those players, players too. I mean, Des Bryant. Yeah, you're you right. Like they're better players than Des Bryant. Tar- type, tar- type target. Yeah. Just a well, huge I mean, the, 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 there's a huge difference because of attitude. Uh, Des Bryant brings an attitude that neither one of those guys had. Um, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Uh, but we all know Des Bryant is not the Des Bryant of old at this point. I am not surprised to not see him on the roster anymore. At first I was, uh, but after I saw some of his tweets, um, some of his feelings towards things, it's not a surprise why he's not on the roster. Um, when you go back to the Torrey Holt situation, uh, Dan, I got to disagree with you, man. I definitely agree with Chris. I would definitely take Torrey in his prime and Reggie Wayne in their prime over Des. The reason being is because of their attitudes, because they were always willing to lead by example. And if they had to follow, they would follow. Des Bryant is not that guy. He may become that guy in the near future because he'll have no choice. Um, Similar to the Allen Iverson situation, uh, where he felt like he was too good to come off the bench. He didn't want to play behind anybody. Um, Similar to the Carmelo Anthony situation we saw last year. I know it's a different sport, but same attitude. Um, But when you have that type of attitude, I would definitely take guys like Torrey Holt, Reggie Wayne, guys who were humble at, at their peak than I would somebody like Des Bryant, just because of his attitude. He's, he was a freak of nature in his prime. But, you know, your attitude kind of speaks a little bit louder than your than your on-field play to me. Yeah, and, man, think about think about with Torrey and Reggie. They were, they were the number two for the bulk of their career. You know, Reggie was behind that guy who killed a guy at a car wash. <laughs> and then uh, Torrey was number two behind Isaac Bruce. Hmm. And, and that, you know... Those guys have no problem with it. it. You know, they are do your job university guys from the get go, you know, and that's just not Dez. But then again, we said the same thing about Randy Moss, but he only lasted one year. So. Oh, hey, there you go. But uh, hey, Chris, before we before we take off, I, I, I can't believe I haven't pointed out your shirt. Oh, you like that? It's pretty. What's going on here? Pretty sweet. Uh, yeah, it's a little custom job <laughs> I had done. Um, not for sale. That'd be illegal, um, but they are pretty flashy and uh, pretty fancy. And I know you guys are all jelly, so <laughs> I'm at least jelly. I, I might I might come back with the shirt of you wearing the shirt. You know that whole deal. And then we'll go oh, into yeah. like the Macaulay Culkin thing. That whatever. and then we can talk about uh, Peter Schrager never coming on the podcast. That's right. So, I'm gonna keep out making. To I'm gonna keep making uh, a shirt until you know of a shirt until he comes. So it's. It'll basically like be like the Browns quarterback charts, but it'll be all pictures of pictures. It's uh, oh. did you ever see What's Up with That? The skit on Saturday Night Live. Uh, yes, incredible skit. And it, like Peter Schrager's our Lindsey Buckingham. You know, we just don't have time for him. He's here. He's yeah. ready. He's on hold. But we yeah. just we got no time for him. We'll, we'll bring him in on a mic soon. But uh, again, hey, we're we're a little over the the limit here, guys. Thanks for hopping on our first ever um. Kind of new format here again. What we're bringing in with yeah. what what we we called it. What's up this week on Instagram? We're kind of still formulating a name, of course. Uh, you know, still ironing out a few kinks, but this was kind of our first shot at it. We're gonna do this um, kind of whenever we want. That's that's the best part about it. We'll still put out the podcasts on Friday. Uh, you're gonna be seeing a lot more live stuff from us. A lot more um, a lot more guests coming on remotely. Again, we yeah. do this completely remotely. Remotely, I would love to sit in the same room as these guys every week. But uh, unfortunately, just doesn't doesn't allow for that sometimes. But uh, we will be on the road as well um, this year doing a bunch of these, too. So, yeah, we got a really exciting show coming from the uh, food court at Hartsfield International Airport in a couple weeks. That's so right. that's right. You guys get, get ready for Pen- that. Pending any interferences from uh, from people behind <laughs> us. So. No Chick-fil-A, you know, because it's a Sunday. Because a quick story. Me and Chris tried to do an awesome recap of the draft live. And well, the problem is they serve beer at the draft. Lots so, of beer. So we we did like eight takes where like people just kept jumping in and yelling stupid things. So no, it wasn't people. It was four Cardinal fans. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so we just said, "Screw it, we're rolling this out." Um, oh, they only want to talk about my mustache. I mean, for, well, I can't blame them. I mean, it was pretty good. It was. I wasn't yeah. recognized. Pretty good, but yeah. Um. Hey, we are uh, again up in the hour. So uh, check us out. Uh, each week on the Riot Network on Fridays uh, at Keep Pound Den, at Tacos and Slurpees, at uh, Pepper Jack NBB. Uh, we'll be throwing these out there. Um, and anytime kind of Panthers, big Panthers news breaks will be coming on. We want you guys to come on with us. Thanks for you guys that uh, sent in the questions this week. And um, we'll start even formulating a whole bunch of them beforehand, too. Again, we do pull them in from both Instagram, at Keep Pound Den, and on Twitter here. Uh, and then these videos will be uh, going to all the social networks. So we'll be out on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. Um, and Instagram 
um, all throughout the week. So we're going to sign off. And I'm still off. lobbying hard for MySpace, guys. We'll bring it back. MySpace Nobody and... else is on it. We might as well do it. <laughs> MySpace and traction. Friendster. Yeah, they, MySpace yeah. and Friendster haven't gotten back to us. And if Napster wants to pick up the pod, uh, just let us know. So There you go. Uh, we're going to call it quits this week. Uh, again, guys, thanks for uh, hanging with us. And uh, we'll talk to you next week. Keep pounding, guys. Keep pounding. Cheers. Pounding.